Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about gardening, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and today is September 15th. Today in botanical history, we'll celebrate an American doctor, a viscountess, and a Canadian fiction writer. We'll hear a little excerpt about September, such a milestone month for so many people. And we grow that garden library today with a book about one of America's greatest explorers. And then we'll wrap things up with tomato tips from garden writer Stuart Robinson, who shares how to get the last of your harvest to ripen faster, a question on many gardeners' minds. But first, here's today's curated news. Uh, All right, before we get to today's curated news, I have to tell you that I went ahead and splurged at a garden center, and I now have on my desktop a little Zen garden. And it is so addicting and so regulating. And what I especially love about it is this little toolkit that I bought for it. It came with a rake and a brush and a little shovel and then a tweezer. And I have to say, it is surprisingly satisfying to play with this thing. I'll take a phone call or I'll just need a break from writing. And then I find that I'm making different patterns in the sand. The other thing that I'll tell you that I think is just really, really cool is the brush. Who knew that a little brush, a little paintbrush could be so fun to work with? Very clever. Now, if I can find it online, I will try to locate this exact little kit that I got, and then I'll share it in the Friday newsletter because I think it's so great. I like that the tools have a little longer handle than some of the other kits that I've seen. And I also love the size of this tray because it's not too narrow and it's also not too big. It's like a, I would say six inches by five inches. So just a nice little desktop size for a Zen garden, beautiful. And I'll enclose uh, some pictures of it as well in the Friday newsletter. All right, let's cover today's curated news. This is an article that I found over on the counter. It was written by Julie Cart, and it's really the title that caught my eye because it's called Torture Orchard. And then it asks, can science transform California's crops? to cope with drought. Now, specifically, what they're trying to do in California is to help farmers find trees that can still produce crops while at the same time taking up much less water because they're going to have to if they intend to continue to grow these crops in California where there's been so much drought. And the long-term forecast is not getting any better. Now, what I found fascinating about this article is this test that was developed at UC Davis. It essentially works like a blood pressure cuff, and they use it on these trees. And from that pressure, they're able to monitor the moisture levels within the tree, in the plumbing system of the tree. Now, one of the professors at the university, his name is Ken Shackle, he devised his own water test method. And what he does is he takes a leaf from a tree and then he puts it under tremendous pressure. And from that pressure, he's able to observe just how much water comes out of that leaf. And that is a clue to the smallest amount of water that a tree needs in order to survive. Ken, in particular, is working with walnuts, grapes, prunes, and almonds. Those are the four crops that he's focusing on. Now, this is a pretty long article. There's lots of information in here about the types of trees that they're selecting, where they're searching for trees. No surprise, the Middle East. But they're also trying to breed trees that'll be able to produce without needing a ton to drink. And I think this is a Herculean task, but it's very, very, very important work. And, you know, it was hard for me 
to hear the term torture orchard because, of course, as gardeners, we don't like to see plants suffer. But at the same time, these scientists are learning about boundaries and how to push boundaries when it comes to growing trees that produce food crops. So it's fascinating work, but I did find myself squirming just a little bit, thinking about what these poor plants are having to go through. And of course, it will all be worth it if they're able to survive and handle some of the tough conditions that we're anticipating occurring in the future. All right, that's it for today's curated news. If you'd like to find this article for yourself, you don't need to track it down. All you need to do is head on over to the Facebook group for the show, search for the word torture, and this article will pop right up. Now, if you're not in the Facebook group for the show, don't worry about it. It is so easy to join. All you need to do is head on up to the search bar where you'd search for a friend and type in the words Daily Gardener Community and then request to join. I'll see you in the group. It's time for today's botanical history. Here's botanical history for today, September 15th. Today is the birthday of the American poet, surgeon, and geologist James Gates Percival, who was born on this day in 1795. In his book called The Language of Flowers, he wrote, In eastern lands they talk in flowers, and they tell in a garland their loves and cares. Each blossom that blooms in their garden bowers, on its leaves, a mystic language bears. And in his work, The Flight of Time, James wrote, Roses bloom, and then they wither. Cheeks are bright, then fade and die. Shapes of light are wafted hither, then, like visions, hurry by. And it was on this day, September 15th, in 1872, that the English gardening author, teacher, and the second Viscountess Wolseley, Frances Garnett Wolseley, was born. Her Glend College for Lady Gardeners in East Sussex was patronized by Gertrude Jekyll, Ellen Wilmot, and William Robinson. Frances once wrote, it is with real sorrow that we see so many survivors of an era of not particularly good taste in the shape of iron benches. It is their undoubted durability which has preserved them, and we who try to rest upon them are the sufferers, not only for their unpleasing appearance, but from the ill-chosen formation of the back. Well, I have to agree with Francis, and every time I see one of these iron benches or even like the little tea sets that you might find on a secondhand website like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, I just keep on scrolling because they are not comfortable to sit on. She was right. And today is the birthday of Marjorie Harris, a Canadian nonfiction writer, garden expert, and garden author. She was born on this day in 1937. Marjorie was the host of the Urban Gardener radio show for CBS. And in addition to the countless articles and columns that she produced, she wrote more than a dozen books on gardening. And here's one of my favorite quotes from Marjorie Harris. The longer you garden, the better the eye gets, the more tuned to how colors vibrate in different ways and what they can do to each other. You become a scientist as well as an artist with the lines between increasingly blurred. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words come to us from New York Times best-selling author Lauren Oliver. This is an excerpt from her fiction book, Vanishing Girls. The windows are open, 
admitting the September breeze, a month that smells like notepaper and pencil shavings, autumn leaves, and car oil, a month that smells like progress, like moving on. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, The World Was My Garden by David Fairchild. This classic book came out in 1938, and the subtitle is Travels of a Plant Explorer. It's one of my favorite old books. In this book, you learn directly from the fabulous plant explorer, David Fairchild, about what it was like to travel the globe searching for new plant species to bring home to the United States. In this first-hand account, David shares his extensive botanical expertise, in addition to detailed stories about his time with primitive cultures in the far reaches of our planet. And you might be surprised to know that David was also a great photographer, a little-known fact nowadays, and he provided all of the photos that you'll see in this remarkable book. This book is 634 pages, a big, big book of botanical exploration with David Fairchild as your guide. You can get a used copy of this rare out-of-print book, The World Was My Garden by David Fairchild, and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $50. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was on this day, September 15th in 2004, that the newspaper, The Gazette, out of Montreal, Canada, featured a column by garden writer Stuart Robinson, who shared his tips for getting tomatoes to ripen faster. He wrote, The first trick is to trim some of the leaves covering the green fruit so that they're more exposed to the sun. This also helps them warm up during the daytime. But the very best way of making sure that all of the fruit on a vine turns ripe is to cut down on their competition. Step one is to pinch off all of the side shoots, be ruthless, and remove them all, even if they seem to be producing a small set of flower buds. Step two is trim the growing tips from all the remaining stems to stop the plant from getting any bigger. One gardener I know swears that severe pinching threatens the plant so much that it hurries to set its fruit and seeds much quicker. So there you go. A little tip for getting your tomatoes to ripen faster from the great garden writer, Stuart Robinson. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove and Wyoming, Minnesota. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.